Sorry about that, my mic was off. Welcome back to Code Station 33. Today we are going to look at what happens when we want to send information back from the function. The last thing we looked at is how to send information from arguments to parameters in our function. Let's take a look at where we left off. This is what we had written so far. We have a little program here that is going to assign two variables, side one and side two. It is then going to calculate, find side, and assign that to the hypotenuse. But what we want to have happen is we want the information to come back as a float. And then we can store that information in another variable. So instead of storing the information here in the hypotenuse as a float, we can do our calculation and return the information using this command called return. So now we're going to send A and B, do our calculation, and return the result. That's what the return command does. Now we've got to catch that and store it somewhere. So instead of it being just calling the method, the function I should say, it's going to call the function and then send a value back which we could then store in hypotenuse. And then finally we want to print it out. like that, and we're going to print it to the screen. And let's see what we get. And look, we get the correct answer. 29.48 is printed to the screen. So let's review what we have here. We started our serial monitor in our setup function, which is void, which means it returns nothing, and it has no parameters to send to it. Then our loop is going to constantly loop through over and over and over again. Each time it loops through that function, we're going to define two variables, side one and side two, which has a scope just inside the loop. And we're going to calculate the hypotenuse by calling a function that we created that finds the missing side based upon side one and side two. Again, side one and side two only live within this set of braces here. So we're gonna send the values that are stored in side one and side two as arguments to the parameters in our function right here, find side, and it's gonna catch it. And then it's gonna calculate the square root of those two sides and return that value to the variable hypotenuse, and then finally we're going to print the hypotenuse on the screen. And that's how we send information and receive it back from our function. The last thing in our pseudocode plan here was we needed to talk about how to collect the information from the sides and verify that you know they're not negative and uh, they would be okay to form a triangle. So we could write a function for that and have it read the value. It turns out that's a little bit more complicated in our code to do because this loop constantly goes through over and over again and if we try to read values from the serial monitor it's going to be constantly reading a value. And if we don't type anything in fast enough, it's going to read a value of zero, which is going to wreak havoc with our program. So we need to find some way of getting the computer to slow down a little bit and read a value, but only read a value if we actually typed something. Don't read a value if nothing has been typed. So I have a function here that we can use that will do that for us. Rather than just read the line, we have to do a little bit more work than that. So let me grab that function and post that in for us. So we had added a couple things. 
to make our program able to receive values using our serial monitor and have it separate those values into two separate sides. So I've written this for you and feel free to use it in the future and copy it. The first thing we did is we asked the user to enter in a side. We gave them some indicator to know that they should be entering in a value. Then we have this little command here that says while not serial available, and then I end the semicolon, which means this loop is going to run forever and ever and ever waiting for the serial monitor to become available. In other words, waiting for someone to type in a value. Once they have typed in a value, we're going to read that value. If they haven't typed in a value, we're not going to do anything. That'll keep us from getting just garbage from the serial monitor while it's waiting for a value to be typed in. Now, if the user types in a zero, uh, we're not going to do anything. We're just going to stop. This also slows down the computer a little bit. Because we're in this infinite loop here, we have to slow our Arduino down a little bit and give it time to actually read the values. We're going to do it again with the other side. Again, we have our infinite loop here waiting to see the serial to be available. And if it's equal to zero, we're going to do a return. And then finally, we're going to calculate our hypotenuse just like we did before. Now you notice we're now calling something called read serial, which is that other function I told you I was going to write. And it returns a float just like we expected it to. It's going to, it's called read serial, doesn't take any type of parameters. And we're going to use what's called parse float. And then the reason why we're using that is because the values that are actually typed into the serial monitor are characters. And even though it looks like a nine to us, the computer sees it as a character, just sees it as a symbol. So if you were to type in 96, the computer would not differentiate that between the letter A and the letter nine. It just has some kind of value stored with that. So it knows which key was pressed. So the computer has to interpret that nine and a six typed in as a number. That's what the command parse float does. It tells the computer to read that as a number rather than just reading it as characters. So we're going to store that in a variable called i, and we're going to make sure that the user hasn't typed in a negative 1 or any other negative value. And if they have, we're going to tell them, hey, that's not a valid number. And then we'll give them a chance to um, go ahead and try reading another value later on, but we're going to return a value of zero. So let's give this all a try and see how it works. I'm going to start my simulation. Enter a side value three. There we go. Enter the other side value four. And it gives me the hypotenuse. And then it asks me again, what if I type in negative 23? Aha, that isn't a valid side number, and it asked me to do it again. It basically returned out of that loop. That's what that return did. Returns out of our loop. If we have that look back up here in our code. This return returns out of our loop, so that way we are not accepting that negative value as a positive, possible value. So we're going to do it again. Three, four, our other value, and of course our hypotenuse is five. You also notice that I have this serial print line here. If I don't have that there and the user types in a number, they can't see what they type. They just type in something. It shows up here. There's no indication that it gets received. We don't have to put that in there, but I kind of like it in there so that way the user knows that the computer actually received what they typed. So it's a nice indicator again. I'll post all this code for you in our Canvas page and you can use this as you want to to help you do other kinds of programs where you get values and then do some calculations with them. That's all for today. I will see you next time.